Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I would like to talk about a topic very dear to me, the Sony PlayStation 3, a console that was widely popular in its heyday and that pioneered a lot of innovations that are taken for granted nowadays. But how much of my fascination for the PS3 is just blatant nostalgia and how much does it really have to offer by today's standards? Is it even worth playing a console that is almost two decades old at this point? In other words, should you buy a PlayStation 3 in 2024? Enjoy! The PlayStation 3 was Sony's third home console and the successor to the PlayStation 2, which was the most sold video game system of all time, so naturally the stakes were pretty high. Development started as early as 2001, only a single year after the launch of the PS2. When it was finally released to the public in 2006, the PlayStation 3 revolutionized gaming, although this revolution came with a hefty price tag. In the United States, the most affordable version of the console retailed at $499, which adjusted for inflation would equate to over $750 today. This pricing, along with technical difficulties like the notorious yellow light of death, posed a challenge for Sony during the PS3's launch. Despite state-of-the-art features like a Blu-ray disc drive, built-in Wi-Fi, backwards compatibility with both PS2 and PS1 games and even wireless controllers, the console struggled to sell to a larger audience. It was only after the console's first revision, the PlayStation 3 Slim, that the system gained serious traction. This was not only due to the aggressive price cut, but also because at this point the game library was much larger than it was initially. Unfortunately, from this point onward, the PS2 backwards compatibility was removed. Thankfully, all models retained the capability to play PS1 games. To summarize it briefly, there are three main models of the PS3. The original, also known as the FAT model, with multiple variants, all with slight differences. The PS3 Slim, the most popular and polished model of the lineup. And the PS3 Super Slim a budget variant released in the final years of the PS3's life cycle, often bundled with a game or a second controller. In this video we will focus on the PlayStation 3 Slim, because this is what I have on hand. The Slim variant, in my opinion, stands out as the most aesthetically pleasing among them. It design is sleek and inobtrusive, making it easy to integrate into any room. There's only two buttons, one for power, one for the disk drive. It has two USB ports in the front and Ethernet, optical audio, HDMI or alternatively an AV output on the back. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the Slim variant. I wish I could say the same about the controller. For the DualShock 3, Sony opted to reuse the same design from its predecessors, resulting in the same ergonomic flaws. The controller's small size doesn't accommodate larger hands comfortably and it can feel somewhat cheaply made. It charges via mini-USB and has a decent battery life. I typically get at least 8 hours out of mine, even after years of use. The analog sticks are functional but a little too loose and the convex triggers make your fingers slip, which is exactly the opposite of what a trigger is supposed to do. The controller does offer haptic feedback and a more or less usable gyroscope, but nothing too exciting by today's standards. Admittedly, transitioning back to the DualShock 3 after using Sony's newer controllers is a bit challenging, but you do get used to it after a few hours. The PlayStation 3 had a very long lifespan resulting in an impressive library of games, many of which remain exclusives to this console. Here are some noteworthy examples. But bear in mind that with over 5000 games on the platform, if I happen to overlook your favorite, feel free to shout it out in the comments below. Resistance is a challenging FPS series pitting players against the Chimera in an alternative 1950s universe reminiscent of War of the Worlds. I've been hoping for a reboot of the franchise for many years now, but I'm afraid Sony has forgotten about this really underrated franchise for the foreseeable future. Killzone is yet another FPS series in need of a reboot. In this gritty sci-fi universe you find yourself in the middle of a brutal conflict between two rivaling factions, the ISA and the Hellgast. These games are visually stunning and hold up quite well, both gameplay and graphics wise. 
Ratchet and Clank is a 3D platformer series and an absolute cult classic. Most games in the franchise are in fact on the PS3. The best examples I would say are Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus and A Crack in Time. As you probably know, the last Ratchet and Clank game is not even that old, which gives me a tiny sliver of hope that Sony will eventually give some of the older IPs some desperately needed love and attention also. Many titles also featured local co-op, which is a feature often overlooked by developers nowadays. But even online gaming was great back on the PS3. For one, it's free. Hard to believe these days, I know. In many cases you can still play online, even right now. There are small but dedicated communities for certain games such as Call of Duty Black Ops. For games without official servers, passionate fans have taken it upon themselves to set up unofficial ones, as seen with Killzone 2, keeping the online experience alive for those who still wish to enjoy it. It goes to show just how much this, dare I say, retro console has to give. Several games I played on the PS3 recently I have never played before in my life, ergo I have no fond memories of them. They are just fun, even by today's standards, and the console does a great job playing them. No long installs, no long updates, no paid subscriptions. This simplicity and reliability contribute to the enduring charm of the PS3 and make it so beloved by many, such as myself. One other important aspect of PS3 games is that they are largely not region locked, allowing you to purchase titles from any country and play them on your PlayStation at home. This is particularly beneficial for collectors. As of the making of this video, the PS3 store is still online and you are theoretically capable of buying digital copies of games. Sony's tried to shut down the store a few years ago, which ended in a massive backlash, causing them to eventually back down. But it goes without saying that it's only a matter of time before the store closes, and only physical games remain. <laughs> well, physical games and alternative sources. It's common consensus, the PlayStation 3 feels modern. Part of the reason why is its clean user interface, also known as the cross-media bar, which allows you to access everything from media applications to your games fast and snappy. I absolutely love it. What also helps the modern look and feel is the HDMI output with a maximum resolution of 1080p. That being said, most games run only at 720p. Still, the image does not seem out of place, even on a 4K screen. The console also serves as a great media hub for watching movies. The disk drive is quiet enough doing media playback and some streaming apps like Netflix, surprisingly, still work also. Arguably the best part about buying a PlayStation 3 in 2024 is just how cheap it is. The console can be easily found on eBay for under 100 euros. Most games I could find are under 10. With a budget of 150 euros, you could easily buy a PS3 Slim, a second controller for co-op, and a few games on top. To me at least, this sounds like a fantastic deal. In summary, I cannot stress enough just how good the PlayStation 3 is. It's very affordable, has an amazing backlog of games, lots of which are exclusives. It boasts multiple features such as an HDMI output, Wi-Fi or wireless controllers which allow it to almost seamlessly blend in with more modern devices. Free online gaming still works to some capacity, it's a reliable media player and most importantly it is plain and simple fun. I can definitely recommend buying one of these consoles even in 2024. For the people that are feeling nostalgic for the 7th console generation or newcomers with a tight budget, whether you missed out on some classic games that were never ported or wanting to try out some niche hidden gems that time has forgotten about, I'm willing to bet that the PlayStation 3 has something for you and will be relevant to some capacity for a long time. But hey, that's it on my part. If you have any questions or simply want to share your opinion, please leave a comment below Thank you very much for watching and of course, have a wonderful day.